So thank you for being with us today, Lisa. Here's my first question for you. Why is a noble sales purpose especially important and strategic now in a post-pandemic market? So we stand in a moment in time where your customers are asking a very important question. Are you here to help me or are you just here to close me? And so because of what has happened in the, in the pandemic, it stripped away all the peripheries from the sales process. And it came down to this central point with customers asking companies and individual sellers, are you here to close me? Or are you actually here to help me? And now there's a second thing that's been happening at the same time which employees, salespeople themselves that work for companies that used to sit in the sales room with everybody else and go out and meet with customers, when they went home, they had a lot of time to think. And they started asking, why am I here? Do I make a difference? Does my job matter? Am I just a, a tool to make money? And so what's happening is you have two things happening, two things going on at the same time. Customers want to know, are you here to help me? And salespeople want to know, do I make a difference? And so what a noble sales purpose does is it says to both of those people, the role of the seller is to make a difference in the life of the customers. And so when you implement a noble sales purpose across the organization, it hits those two crucial things. And so, Lisa, can you share an example or an anecdote based on your real life experience of a situation in which you witness the importance of a noble purpose? Yes, I absolutely can. And there's several of these in the book, but I'll give you one of them and you can probably relate to this. You know, a lot of times when we talk about noble purpose, people think, well, you have to cure cancer or invent some big new thing. That's not always true. So we were working with a firm that were IT consultants and we shifted with them. Originally, they said, we're there to provide IT consulting. We want to sell as much IT consulting as we can. We want to you know, provide the best IT consulting we possibly can. We want to be good people. We want to be the best at our job. And all those things are good, but they shifted it and they got really clear on who their target market was, which was small businesses. And their noble sales purpose was we help make small businesses more successful. Now, that's not the sexiest thing in the world, but imagine the difference if you're a customer, someone coming in saying, I'm here to talk to you about IT services versus someone coming in with the mindset of my job is to make my customer more successful. All the things we've been trying to teach salespeople for decades come to life there. If I want to make the company, my customer more successful, I ask better questions. I'm a better listener. I provide a more robust solution. And so this one company that shifted its whole team from we sell IT services and we want to be the best at IT to this true north of we want to help improve life for the customer, that one company became the leader in their space as a result of that shift. And another example, and people can uh, Google this one if they like, I wrote about it for Harvard Business Review, is we worked with the team at Hootsuite and they are in the tech space and their noble purpose enabled them to scale a large team quickly and actually become a unicorn, which is a billion dollar valuation company. So that's a small example. And then a big example is what you're trying to do with this is point your sales team, not just towards the customer, but towards customer impact. Your noble sales purpose is how do you make a difference to your customers and how do you do it differently? And when you do that, you will line up the whole team and uh, two things happen. You get competitive differentiation in the marketplace and you get better emotional engagement from your team. That's very interesting, Lisa. And one final question about sales teams. How can a sales manager gauge the sensitivity of his collaborators on this strategic issue? So I'm going to give you a really quick hack for sales managers. And this is something that you can do in a meeting and you can do it on a deal review. 
So sales rep comes to you, says, I'm about to close this sale. Typical sales manager questions are, when are you going to close it? How much is it going to be? Do you have the right buyer? Who's the competition? Those are all important questions. You're a sales manager. You know you're supposed to ask those. But I'm going to give you what we call the game-changing question. And the question you want to ask your salesperson is, how will the customer be different as a result of doing business with us? How will the customer be different? And when your seller goes, well, they'll have our services, you push deeper. Tell me what impact will we have on them? How will they be different? So if you take nothing else away from this, when you as a sales manager start asking that questions in deal reviews, before presentations, you look at a seller's presentation, you say, I want to see in here, how is the customer going to be different as a result of doing business with us? That is a game changing question. And what we've seen is when sales managers start asking that question, your win rate goes up dramatically. Because if your rep can't articulate it to you, they're never going to be able to articulate it to the customer. So you want to get a reputation as a leader of someone that goes beyond just when are you going to close it and how much is it going to be? But you as a sales leader are always asking, how will the customer be different as a result of doing business with us? You'll drive better behavior from your sales team.